Thanks, Chris. I'm Simon Bradbury, a lecturer in architecture, and I'm going to just cover briefly the work that's going on in architecture and the culture theory space research group. Um, I'm going to focus on really the, the way in which we get, undertake our research and the sorts of issues that we're interested in. We very much take design as a methodology for undertaking research as well as the conventional forms of research. And I think it's interesting because it puts us at a threshold between the <coughs> delivery of solutions in practice and the undertaking of, of research within academia. Um, we start very much from place and we at the moment are very interested in locations such as these. This is Mill Bay on the right and on the left is a former Tracti site in Orsus called Orsus in Warsaw um, and we typically are invited there by stakeholders and local government. We were invited to Ursus by the industry partners um, who were facing an onslaught of uh, development, uh, mostly apartments in that context. And what we're trying to do is understand what alternative forms of regeneration and other forms of master planning and architecture might take place in opposition to the kind of conventional neoliberal models of um, apartments, shopping, retail that seem to lead the sorts of regenerations we're seeing in, in many of the post-industrial cities. Um, and we do this by working alongside communities. Here's some photographs of us uh, in two consultations, one in Plymouth and one in, um, in, in uh, Chechen in Poland. And we, having done that, we try to very much think about those issues and try to develop alternative solutions. And you can see here a picture of one of those proposals, which is a prototype housing scheme within that uh, tractor site I mentioned that feeds off the residual waste streams and resources from the surrounding industries whilst providing an opportunity for local food growing um, and communal living as a sort of alternative uh, paradigm <coughs> to what was currently being proposed. Uh, we then take those findings, we publish them, uh, we, we, take, we, we host a number of international conferences. We have one coming in a couple of weeks' time called Industrial Co uh, Ecologies, and we're very much interested in cross-disciplinarity uh, outside of just what we do within architecture. Um, and of course, off the back of those, we also under, uh, have peer review publications, and at the moment we're working with Routledge to develop one on sustainable uh, urban design. Um, and, and indeed, as well as doing the kind of academic side, we influence the kind of policy context. This is a, a, a screenshot from one of the biggest Polish national newspapers reporting on our Ursus tractor factory site and how we are, in a sense, saving their industry by reimagining its future and giving it credibility within the local community. Um, Alongside that, we have other research projects. This is working in partnership with a startup company called Light Up Analytics. And here we're looking at the issue of daylight and sunlight design and master planning. Um, this piece of work started, uh, again, from our students, interestingly, but it's now transformed into a slightly bigger project, uh, was analyzing some of the top 10 award-winning uh, housing design schemes over the last few years to see actually if they did have adequate daylight and sunlight. And to our surprise, First of all, there's no regulation around this particular issue. Um, and secondly, when you follow the guidance, almost all of these projects, including a Sterling Prize nominated award scheme, fail uh, the, the guidance. And what is interesting, perhaps, is not the lack of regulation or the failure, is that the very challenge of trying to regulate daylight and sunlight because of its complexity and the nature <coughs> of context is how on earth we, we deal with this issue, which is becoming increasingly pressing and obviously very interesting in the context of the discussion of things like solar PV uh, and access to, to energy. Um, and we also influence uh, or try and influence policy and, and one of the things that we've uh, helped shape is the current uh, Plymouth Your Space project which was launched a few months ago which has released a number of sites for uh, in ownership of the City Council uh, for communities <laughs> to start up uh, new businesses and that's currently ongoing and there are still I think a number of sites still available as part of that project. So if you're interested in what we're talking about and how we're working, we'd be very much interested in working with you, whether you're an external practitioner or as part of the university uh, as academics, whether you have uh, shared research interests, you have sites you'd like us to look at, uh, or you'd like to uh, influence our program. And we've just launched the Plymouth Research Interface, which really is about building connections between research and practice. And for those of you who are around, Saturday the 31st of May is the next conference we have. Great. Thank you very much.